This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Build a beautiful online presence and run your business with Squarespace. In today's video, we're gonna be comparing 100 yen or $1 store watercolors tubes versus the pans. Which one will be the winner? Let's find out. So this time around, we are back with a whole set of tubes and I did want to compare them with the pans because I feel like pans are notoriously horrible in dollar stores and I thought it would be really interesting just to see if the tubes were any different. So let's start off by looking at our pans. Looks pretty basic. Here are our colors. Yeah, looks like a watercolor set. In comparison to normal $1 store brushes, usually in America they're like a weird plasticky disgusting. This actually kind of looks manageable. Obviously still quite a mess, but it kind of seems usable. Oh my gosh, I just love that there's already brush hairs just all over the package. It is just shedding. I can't wait to see how much it sheds as we use it. That said, I did go ahead and buy some watercolor brushes. They actually look worse than what came with the watercolors, but I figured we'd give them a shot and see what's up as well. So moving on to our tube colors, we do have 12 colors as well. I think that's really cool that it comes with a mixing chart. Let's go ahead and open these bad boys up. Ooh, aw, look at them, they're so cute. I, okay, so something I love about Japan, and I don't know if this is a Japan thing or just like a cheaper quality thing, these little plastic tubes are so much easier to squirt your watercolor out than say a metal tube, which is normal, or like, I don't know if it's metal or aluminum or what, but like obviously nicer quality watercolors come in a sturdier package. So now that we have seen what these watercolors look like, let's give them a little swatch and compare the quality and then complete an art piece with both of these watercolors and see what the verdict is. But let me know in the comments which one you are thinking. Wow, um, gotta hand it to the pans. I absolutely hated the tubes and I was surprised by that. And despite not really liking brighter colors, I actually really like the pans more than the tubes. I don't know, I don't know why, but I do. And so now we're going to be illustrating something and comparing how they work as far as gradients and layering and just seeing how they, how they do. With, with an illustration and we're gonna compare them. Let's get into it. Wait, I didn't test our brushes. Should I test our brushes? It's definitely a lot thicker. Oh, oh my gosh, look at that. Oh my gosh, I love that texture. Okay, oh, I actually, okay, this one's way better than what comes with the watercolors to no one's surprise, but also as a dollar store brush, it's kind of legit and it's and it's small, which I like. This one seems a little bit more similar to what came with the watercolor set. It is starting to fall apart, I can see already, but it is shorter than the one that came with the set, which is nice. That one was just so long and soft. Yeah, this one's just a little too soft for what I'm doing, but I really liked the yellow one because it was a little bit more on the firm side and it, it made quite a nice, texture and this red one was really nice for details too so I actually might use the red and yellow brush and just completely abandon uh the one that came with the set because I kind of hate it okay let's get to drawing but what are we going to draw well let me introduce you to my latest obsession animal crossing mystery capsule toy chocolate egg figurines wow what, what was that to hype up the release of Animal Crossing, there are these chocolate eggs with Animal Crossing figures in them and I have been obsessively hunting them down in Japan. There are 20 figures in total and I was super surprised to actually get a new one in this video, so let's draw Bunny.
But real quick, I forgot to mention I will be using normal watercolor paper in this video as dollar stores only ever carry sketchbooks. Okay. So just to make sure that we got the best comparison between these two different watercolors, I wanted to make sure that we drew pretty much the same thing. So I drew Bunny in the same position, though I thought it would be cute to give her a different expression because it was such a slight difference. It wouldn't really taint our comparison of watercolors, though I thought it was kind of hilarious that I gave her a smiling face on the pans, which I enjoyed a lot more, and gave her a shocked kind of upset face on the tubes. Maybe my brain is telling me something. Bunny isn't one of my favorite characters on Animal Crossing. I don't hate her. I don't love her, but I was really happy by the color choices on this figure that we were going to be able to test in our illustrations. We've got some overlapping on her shirt, so we can definitely test out some layering of watercolors. So I was definitely excited that we had not only a range of colors, but a range of techniques to test with these watercolors. There's even a gradient on her paws, so you know? These colors are gonna get well tested. So you guys already know that I am definitely a lot happier with the pans on the right side than I am with the tubes on the left side, which, like I said, very surprised by. It doesn't matter where I buy them, it just seems like every single cheaper watercolor, be it dollar store, be it $5, the pan style watercolors always have a tendency to be a little bit more on the chalkier side. They don't spread as well. They're very hard to work with. They seem to kind of blob up and not really mix into the water well. So going into this test, I was very skeptical. In fact, this was originally just going to be another $1 or 100 yen rather test to test out watercolors just focused on tubes because I don't know where you guys live but I have never seen dollar store tube watercolors but then I thought it would be really fun to compare the pans and boy was I surprised by the fact that I love the pans more than the tubes. I was shocked what can I say? So going into this comparison, right off the bat, I was a little worried that the pans were very vibrant. The colors were bright, almost neon, yet the tubes had earthier colors, which to my surprise, I actually did prefer the brighter, more vibrant colors of the pans compared to the dull, earthy colors of the tubes. If there's one thing I've learned about watercolor is that it's a lot easier to mix an earthy color than it is to create a bright color from earthy color. So having the variety or even the option to mix your own earthy color is a lot better. So as much as I don't like those neon bright colors, it just gave you more variety, which was good. The pans were also just so much more pigmented than the tubes. The tube watercolors, they had this weird liquidy acrylic feel to them, which I think kind of held back how much pigment they had, I guess because they were already watery. And if you wanted to use them as a watercolor, you needed to make them a little bit more watery to use. And that just dulled down the colors. Whereas with the pans, they were very pigmented and they were great. I liked them. Good job pans. It was also just easier to work with the pans than the tubes, which I said, very surprised by. I found it just so much easier to mix the colors into a water, get a lovely gradient. And the tubes really let me down in that department. They were kind of chunky. They just didn't want to mix into the water well. There was some weird resistance. And overall, the gradients I got with the tubes was just not as smooth as the pans, unfortunately. And my number one concern with these watercolors was going to be how chalky they were. And to be honest, I was actually really impressed by how not chalky they were. In fact, these are probably the least chalky dollar store watercolors I have ever used. So good job to both of these. As far as dollar store watercolors go, I wasn't having a bad time. The real test for these watercolors came with the shading and layering. Once I had the base color down and had already played around with the gradients, which worked pretty well, it was time to shade and I was really curious to see how these watercolors would layer. 
Something you have to keep in mind with watercolors is do they reactivate too easily when you layer? If they're too chalky, they will absorb the water from your layers and spread out. So those are two things that I was really concerned about. But again, I was really impressed with these. Not only were they not chalky, so the colors didn't absorb the liquid from the second layer. They also didn't reactivate really easily, which meant I was able to layer a color on top of another layer and not worry about that previous layer being reactivated and basically disappearing. So overall, this is the best $1 store watercolor experience I've ever had in my life. Wow. So at this point, I did want to add some line art to our illustration. Normally I put down a line work for my illustrations first and then do the watercoloring, kind of like a coloring book style. But dollar stores, they don't normally have waterproof markers. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to use colored pencils. Unfortunately, there aren't a whole lot of color variety in these colored pencils. So I did decide to just do some spot lining here and there just to reinforce some spots, be it the white, White, or just reinforce some really dark areas. And the coloring line art really just adds a pop of color that's really fun, especially I didn't use black, but I used a really dark blue to outline the white areas. So that was really fun. We're not here to review the pencils, but they were a little waxy, a little hard to layer, but they got the job done. And that is it for our 100 yen watercolor comparison. Overall, congratulations, pan watercolors, you killed it. As you know, I'm very shocked, but pleasantly surprised by the quality, honestly, of both of these. Now to show off my wonderful creations for under a dollar with Squarespace's professional portfolio designs to display my projects. Wow! Automatic image scaling ensures your art always looks its best and with easy importing using Twitter or Instagram, you can have a portfolio up and ready to go in minutes. Need help? No worries! Squarespace offers 24-7 email support, so go on, head to squarespace.com for a free trial and use code CASEYGOLDEN for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this comparison and I'll see you in the next one. Stay golden! Stay golden.